adversity, bring it. The struggle, we welcome it. Snooze on life, never that. We are Dave Regina and Mike Perella, and this is the No Snooze Podcast. Come on. Welcome back to No Snooze Podcast, episode 19. 18. I can't hear you. <laughs> it's 18. It's oh, 18. I thought Be- you were saying something. Yeah. Welcome it, back it, to the No <laughs> Snooze Podcast, episode 18. I got confused because there was the forgotten episode of the Food Challenge, which we'll get to that and more today. I think this is going to be our best episode yet. What do you think? I, I heard that too. So welcome to the official Epi 18, Mike. I can't believe we're almost at 20. I say it every episode, but I, I still can't believe we're almost there. Yeah, it's tough. It, it's crazy because when you think about, you know, us putting out one per week, you know, if we were to say, I remember having the conversation like, wow, imagine when we have to do, you know, episode 20, 25, 30, 45, and it was like too big of a goal. But now when you break it down, we're just doing one a week, it starts to stack and it starts to add, add up, right? Yep. And if I can avoid breaking any more equipment at my house, uh, we'll be in better shape because we just were scrambling behind the scenes because I broke my microphone, which I've been using, and I was trying to figure out how to do the speaker Bluetooth combo. So it's, uh, yep. you know, each week I'm, I'm throwing curveballs at us. CV, thankfully, is with us, and I was giving him a little lip earlier, but he was right once again. I forget. Right. I, him and my wife, I don't know why I argue with them. Dave also. <laughs> My work wife. Well, that's, yeah, I'm, I'm old news. Now you got new arguments. Uh, so yeah. I get excited when you guys fight because then I sit back and I already knew that CV was going to win that one. So I mm-hmm. just sat back. I just watched and listened to it. But it was good. We're back. You're looking tight, even though you ate 25,000 calories last week. Talk to me about the pod bod. The pod bod is currently in shambles. Uh, I've been uh, positive in the past and, you know, I've been able to keep weight off somewhat, uh, but I'm in the stage where I am doing as much as I can. I'm embracing prego life with my wife. We're about two months out. Uh, the food show just dropped and we are trying to, instead of fighting the current, I think I'm going to roll with it now. And I think something we're going to do to help with the community and all the small businesses and food is I'm really going to lean into it and we're going to start doing takeout episodes. Um, Even just posting today, they had a bunch of orders that came in to help out the business. So it was a nice positive thing that we didn't intend and the timing worked out where you can contribute. So it's, you know, pod bod is definitely um, in shambles, long story short, but I have the right mindset about it and I don't think I'm losing any edge. I don't feel sluggish. I have the energy. Uh, but how about you? You're, you're going the other way. I'm, I'm we, leaning into the thickness. You're getting out of the thickness. Well, listen, I'm just trying to remain, trying to remain consistent right now. So for you, we, we might have to do like a packing on the pounds update, right? Yeah, before, yeah. <laughs> before you were punting week after week. Now we're going to be packing on the pounds for you. So that's fine. We could add another one. In all seriousness, the priority right now, and you could tell by me squinting, I'm trying to get this nursery done because we're about two months out, both of us, and uh, the nursery is priority over my home office, and my home office I need so bad because like this contraption in the dining room is just not going to fly anymore, and it's the only thing that's really stressed me out big time uh, so far, so I'm pushing hard to get the nursery done. Not an excuse, but my arms are, I, I'm exhausted from how much sanding no, I've had to do. And we'll get into that too. Yeah, yep. Yeah. No, painting and all that stuff, um, you know, and sanding. Not that I sand, but I did do a little bit of painting. We'll talk about that. Um, but even my, you know, my, my routine is, is definitely the same in terms of hitting the pelly, but I've incorporated a light dumbbell workout every day, which is nice because, you know, you used to, Back in the day, you're lifting all these heavy weights and you're, you're switching it up to your chest, your back. I'm not doing that anymore. I'm doing just like a full body workout um, and I'm doing something daily. And it's 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 great, man. You know, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, definitely miss the gym. But like we said last time, you know, I'm surprised at how much I actually um, don't mind just walking downstairs. 
How many? What's lightweight? Give me some context. Uh, d- no, just between 10, 10 to twenty pounds. But I'm doing nice. I'm doing a, a ton of reps. Um, and then you know, wifey even jumps in sometimes. She has threes, fives, tens as well. So we do it together. Uh, there's even been a request to post a little uh, Prego workout with her. So may- nice. maybe we'll do that. Yeah, I got to get Dana to get motivated to do that as well. But they tagged me <laughs> in the squat challenge or whatever that was. So that was know, hilarious. Uh, yes. Yeah. Mike's peach. I saw that. I do have to work <laughs> on my peach. I actually did squats, air squats before the challenge, like yep. in a panic trying to get ready. So that might Good. be something I, like I incorporate. <laughs> I can't wait till I roll out of this and I, we go to the beach or something. I just have a nine pack. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll wait for that, Mike. Baker's dozen pack. So, Mike, now we get into the uh, the legendary Prego update. And I do have to call you out on this because my wife and I, we were driving the other day, uh, going to an appointment, and we had jumped in the uh, in the group chat, and Karina goes, what did Mike just say? We're about f- 16 weeks out or four months out or something like that. <laughs> and Dana was like, yeah, he has no idea what's going on. But now I think I think you're back because you said 12 weeks away, which is which is accurate. Um, no, I said two months. What? I said two months. No, no, no. I'm saying right, right, right. So oh, that, that guy. Yes, guy. yes, yes. You, you went from you went from 12 weeks, which at the time we thought was accurate, but now magically, boom, two months away. So it's eight weeks, but you're back on track. How's Dana feeling? I've complained about that, though, in the past, like the whole weeks to months conversion. I never liked it. Just tell me how many months and round up or down. Keep it simple. That, that's it. Uh, Keep it simple. You like that? Dana's doing great. She is thriving, uh, starting to get a little uncomfortable as far as just yep. like around the house. And the baby's kicking like crazy, which is really cool to see. It's ve- She's very round, the baby. And it's I, I constantly crack jokes like <laughs> her belly button like came out of nowhere and it's an Audi. And I'm like, when did you start uh, smuggling dumplings in your belly button? <laughs> so, like, we're making light of it because she's so uncomfortable. Um, but she is, she's not here, which is great. She's officially nesting. So she's yep. cooking like crazy, which yes. I am not going to argue with. Like, cook me the worst stuff you can if you want to cook. And I'm going to just parlay this. And listen, the bod yeah. can wait. You know what I mean? I'm going to take advantage of this. But, That's uh, good. And Karina's always cooked, so you you haven't had that uh, that change, yeah. right? But is she how's she taking to it? And I know they yeah. talk all the time, right? So yeah, part it's... of the time, I don't know how they're doing. They talk, so. they right? They, they talk, uh, but yeah, we are thirty one weeks, so it's coming quick. Uh, the last uh, sonogram, you know, I, I couldn't go into the um, into the appointment, but uh, I you know I waited outside in the car, which is super strange these days but look you got to be safe and social distance so we understand all that uh but she came back man and the baby's already four pounds uh she's they they showed us uh her hair which is crazy you could see her her outlines of her of her lips thank god she doesn't have lips like me so i believe that she's gonna look like her like her mother What's, what's wrong with your lips i don't know i got these like little lips over here going on i don't have luscious pirelli uh pirelli thunder lips over there I used to sign my uh, my uh, all my cards to Dana Thunderlips. That was my thing. <laughs> what, what, so I I don't mean to interrupt you, but you took uh, Karina to the appointment. And you sat in the car mm-hmm. and you waited. You yep. couldn't have texted me that strategy right there. I didn't even think to do that. Dana was like, okay, I'm going. I was like, all right, I'll see you when you get back. I'm I'll hopping on this call. And then, you know, no, but. I, okay, look, I, I apologize. But she had she had the first appointment. It was like 730 in the morning. Um, and it was actually, so to to your defense, I'm sure it was a sunny day. But to, to um, us, when we went, it was a downpour. My wife, I don't feel comfortable with her driving. Uh, great driver, absolutely phenomenal driver. See, I've been backed up I, so if, fast. If I'm I not can, comfortable. If I can, oh, she's a great driver. If I can control that, I'm not comfortable with her driving in the rain right now. Um, I'm a little, I'm a little psychotic, Mike. You know how I get. Yeah. Well, yeah. hopefully, uh, next time we drive anywhere, you could drive because, as I've seen, uh, you don't want to get. Uh, although we had a great time. Good content. Good content. Good content. I like it. But yeah. Ultimately, with the Prego update, forget the weeks thing. Just give me months. That conversion's terrible. Just tell me when the baby's coming. I'm there. Yeah, I'm, and if I can. And do. you're ready. So, so I'm, that's what I'm I was going to ask you. Curious, right? Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. This this was going to ask you. So 
I'm coming to a really tough decision where I know I've been saying I'm going to continue to work from home, but it is a real concern that we're two months out and there's a possibility we reopen. I don't know if I want to take on the risk of going back into the office if I don't need to. Yep. To put Dana, but I, if she has to go back into the office, then it's a different conversation. But I don't know. Like, if I can restrict the potential exposure she has, isn't it my duty to do that? I don't. It's all these things I'm constantly kind of noodling. Have you thought no, about that at all? Yeah, it's a tough conversation. But even with the with the schools, you know, as of today, it's they haven't. Maybe by the time this comes out in a couple of days, they'll have made that decision. But they still haven't made the decision in terms of closing schools for the year. My wife's a teacher, so what if they tell her that she's got to go back? I was, you know, we were having the conversation like, you know, we might want to go ahead and try to use some some time for you because how th there's no vaccine or anything like that right now. Why are we going to put ourselves more at risk uh, when we don't know exactly the effects of the coronavirus on, you know, babies? There's been all these different studies and you can't watch the news because you just get crazy about it. Uh, but, yeah, we're having the same conversations behind the scenes. And it's just it, mm -hmm. it, it's an uncomfortable thing that you just have you have no control over it. So you feel so vulnerable to it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like letting go of uh, deciding that until you need to make that decision is very difficult. Right. It's like in your head, you're like, all right, we'll make the decision when it comes up. But you're constantly thinking about like, what if I, you know, people start. For me, it's a little easier, right? Like I don't technically have to be in there. But mm -hmm. like for you, you know, I know for oh, you, yeah. if you're one of the people essential and you have to go back in there, it makes it like um, you don't you don't want to be putting your wife at risk in this very crucial term in the preg pregnancy. Excuse me. So it's something that a lot of people that are in our position are probably dealing with. And I just never really thought about it. Yeah. And, you know, again, we say it every episode since we've been in this pandemic, but thank you to first responders, essential workers, healthcare workers, nurses, anybody in the hospital, uh, up to your maintenance staff, facility operations, because what you guys are doing is absolutely incredible. Uh, we really, you know, we, we love what you're doing and we thank you. And to repeat uh, my part portion of that, everyone who keeps reaching out to ask about our wives, we yes. really appreciate that. It's nice. They really appreciate that you remember that they're going through this. I know they're not the only pregnant people in the world, but it does mean a lot to hear from you and uh, you know know that people are uh, thinking about you. Yeah, and you know the the last thing I guess on, on this is I feel terrible, you know, for our wives. No baby shower, right? My my wife couldn't even go to her sister's wedding because yeah. of the potential Zika virus that was, um, you know, in, in Puerto Rico and in the Caribbeans. So she missed out on that. Now she's not going to get to have a baby shower. Uh, but I mean, I, I guess it's all for a reason. Everything's going to be all right. We're all going to get through this together. Uh, mm -hmm. So we'll just keep chipping away one day at a time, you know? Yeah. And shout out Matt Piro, expecting a baby any day. It would any be incredible day. if it happened right now. But I check in with him <laughs> daily because I'm like, you know, we're, we, you know, we're at the end here and it could yeah. be any day. So I'm like, how are you feeling? He's like, we had a false alarm, you know, not, not a true false alarm, but in his head. Right, right. So right. it's, I can't imagine getting to that point. Oh, Frank and Alyssa did it right, right? Did, she was early by a little bit, what, a month? Yeah, something like that. Right. Yeah, that's the I smooth remember. way to do it. Yep. Rip the Band-Aid off. <laughs> that's good. So this has quickly become a fan favorite, the No Snooze Recommendations uh, we want to hear if you guys have been taking any of these recommendations and exploring them for yourself. I know a lot of people have watched the documentary that we, uh, the scheme and the seven, five, the seven, yep. five, the was the back end wreck. And a lot of people ended up watching that prior to the other one. So, oh, uh, Dave, what do, what do you have? Do you have any, anything quality? Have you watched a movie yet? So my recommendation, we didn't even talk about this, but it's not a movie, but it is television, uh, related. And it, it's kind of, if, I guess, if you want to have a no snoo, I mean, a, uh, a snoozing moment per se, but it's uh, called The Heist, right? H have you heard? Money Heist. Money Heist. It's, is it in Spanish? Yeah. So I was just going to say it's, it's on Netflix. It's in Spanish, but the subtitles are in English. Do not watch their mouths, though, because you get all lost and jumbled. I hate when things don't line and up. You're like... Yeah, but the actual heist itself, it, they take you through like a series of uh, different heists and um, different, I guess, robberies and schemes. So it, it, it's it's a good watch. Very interesting. 
to see how the professor uh, thinks. He's the one that kind of navigates behind the scenes. Uh, I don't want to say too much on it, but it's it's a, a really good, um, I guess, little series that, that you could watch on a Friday, Saturday. Well, the days, I get the guess, the, the days don't even matter anymore, Mike, right? I don't even know what day it is today. I stopped worrying about the days years ago. Is it fiction <laughs> or is it a documentary? Like, is it each, is it like a money heist? Oh, yeah, that is. CV makes a good point. It's a lot of reading. I get my 10 pages in play because I have to read the subbies. But is it based on true events or is it like just a fiction? Fictional? I, I, th I, think, I, I think that it's just based on um, it, that it's nonfiction. That's one of my favorite things to do is to convince people that the, the yeah. movie you're watching is based it's on real. true events. Right. So they freak out while you're watching it. I've done that to yeah. Frank numerous times. I once convinced him, and he can, in the comments, uh, corroborate this. I, used, I told him that the Texas Chainsaw Massacre happened in Rhode Island, and he believed it. <laughs> we, were, we were taking a family vacation. It was really dark. And I was like, you know, this is where the Texas Chainsaw Massacre happened. And he's like, really? That's, that is terrible. Oh, That's my so God. Funny. But it is funny. But you can, knowing him, you can absolutely see how that can, uh, that can work. But yeah. that's hilarious. What, what do you got for us? Uh, so this week, I am doing something uh, practical. I have been using the service Fiverr for business, uh, especially now because you can't really meet with people in, in person. It's all virtual creatives that it's do... Not Fiverr? It, I don't know what the technical <laughs> term... I think it's called Fiverr because you it was based on doing chores for five bucks. Uh, ah, and, look at that. Yeah, so... But they charge you way more than that. But I've used them for animation, and it's difficult because my animator is in Armenia. and the, But the nice thing is they work at night. When we're going to bed, they're waking up. So I can get in my edits and then the next morning see the progress, which I really like. It's, it's kind of incredible. Uh, but it is very difficult to, in a email communicate a visual representation that you want to create but fiverr's great it has logo designers uh animation voiceover has anything you can ever imagine for creatives and you so could actually go on and make money if you're good at anything yeah it's kind of, so it's kind of like a uh, technological task rabbit right something exactly like that. exactly right. you, you very elegant maybe you should go on as the communicator on there i will <laughs> uh, boil down your description of <laughs> services <laughs> thank you so but much. i love it i swear by it. people are like hey where how'd you do this thing and i'm like i just did it on fiverr and they're like what's fiverr and they send it so shout out fiverr fiver you got the fiver. news recce recce of the week yeah and, and <laughs> wait oh. re you're good you're good so in terms of the the no snooze recce right and how we add the whys to everything the epis the pushies the pullies the pelly all that. So I'm speaking with Allie, a good friend of mine last week, and her, her fiance comes in and, and I guess he watched the food challenge. Right. And it was, oh, yeah. it was, it was hilarious. The conversation we have, but then he jumps in and he's like, let them know that I'm about to take out the Garby. So <laughs> the Garby. I don't <laughs> so know if that I, works, but I love the effort. The I thought the, the Garby. Yeah. You just adding, adding wise to everything um, is, is the no snooze way, man. I like it. It's funny that that became a thing. People ask me like, why do you guys do that? I'm like, I have no idea. I've never, right. early, early on, we, we were saying like pumping pushies and drinking whiteies, like egg whites. Remember? Yeah. That yep. was a long time ago. That was, but. all right, Mike. So there's been a lot of, Questions coming in, a lot of stuff like that in terms of your food challenge that you did. So you have to give us basically like a recap. I have a couple questions for you too. So I'm not even going to ask you the ones that I saw, but yeah, did you consider that a failure that you didn't get through the McDonald's challenge? Yes. It was a failure. Yep. I, Why? It was For me, it was a failure, but unbelievable resume builder i had a couple people ask me like what'd you eat and i'm like i had when you say it out loud i couldn't i like physically was proud of myself and couldn't stop laughing when i was telling people yeah. I was, my dad was like why don't you, why don't you I, why don't you recap it though real quick so we did the mcdonald's tray challenge it was three 
double quarter pounders, a single quarter pounder, two 10-piece Chicken McNuggets, two medium fries, and four soft drinks. Medium. The soft drinks I got, I got two Dr. Pepper and two High C, which I think I like the choices. They were not a factor. Fluids were not a factor. Um, so we basically were talking about doing this challenge. And once we committed to doing it because people were uh, poking and I really thought I could do it, but I did the too. night before. Yeah. So a couple things happened. We moved it up to a Thursday to make everything work. So the preparation, to be honest, was rushed, which is fine. As you can agree, right, Claudia? Yeah. Um, and I'm just giving the map. No excuses. I failed. I could have probably done something different and been I able to do it. I failed, but go ahead. I failed. A lot of people thought I did it because they saw like the last thing go in and then I like yeah. ran off screen. So they thought I like was celebrating, which is funny. Um, <laughs> so when I found out I was doing it, I had to like meant to get prepared. I was like, all right, well, I just started Googling everything on the foodchallenge.com, which is this guy Atlas who I followed. I took a ton of notes. And I was like, okay, tonight I'm going to get my game plan down. I'll eat a ton of Chinese food to prepare, which I did Sounds with Dana. Sounds like an awful plan, but go ahead. Apparently, the guy said you got to stretch your stomach. I don't know if I executed it well. Um, I don't know if you know I did it far enough in advance or whatever. Anyway, so I did all my notes the night before, and I had a game plan. And in the game plan, I, just, I wanted to put the buns on the end to save on the carbs and the space to fill the stomach. What I did not account for and was my Achilles heel was how hard those buns get. And I definitely should have done some research. Like if I was going to do it again, I should have went to McDonald's and got one because another thing that happened was it was so big. The, the burger was bigger than I remember. Yeah. In my head, I was envisioning it's like Big Mac. I've only had one before in my life, a quarter pounder. I usually get like a Big Mac and a filet of fish. So... uh morning of wake up i have a full day of real estate stuff negotiating deals don't have much time to like work out throughout the day and try to build up a hunger i slept in to make sure i was fresh so when what was it 3 30 came around 4 30 i was supposed to be back and everything got pushed back i was setting up in the back i was getting nervous because it was so cold so in my head i was kind of psyching myself out i was like this food's gonna get cold fast like i I need to sprint through this thing. Like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. So I'm talking to you guys. I'm frantic because like the outside's not really prepared. I'm thinking of all the variables. I'm driving to uh, Port Chester. I drive by you, which you sent me the video of me flying, flying by, by, which is hilarious. Get to the line. And I like I have time when I'm in line. So I start FaceTiming it or whatever live. And when I'm trying to figure out what I have to order in meal form, it stressed me the hell out, which I should have prepared ahead of time. I left too much air. Like when you have to break it down to, to meals because they ask you, you know, do you want that as a meal? You can't just order three quarter pounders, four soda. They ask you to group it up. That really screwed me up. Then I'm in the car because I, I think I got to watch the tape back, but I think I forgot a medium fry which is very ironic because they loaded that fry up. And they when did. I looked at there it, I was so like, oh, fries. no, this, this is a large. So that happened. Um, I rush back. It's right five at the dot, and I know we're going live. Don't have time to, like, mentally get ready, kind of, which I think might have been good. I think that was a positive. I just kind of rolled in started eating, which mm -hmm. was great. Um, so when we jumped in, and I tasted that first burger. I was like, I got a shot here. I really got a shot. Yeah. Burger three. Oh, no. First, I tried to put the burgers together. And I looked at them like, this is way too big. So the first move in the fight, the food fight, I backed out, which I should have just pushed ahead and squeezed it down. And I adjusted my whole game plan. And I ate that first burger. I felt pretty good. I, go, I got a shot. I get through the first three and I'm heading to the fourth or the first two and I'm heading to the set, the third and fourth. It's just so much food. I'm having a hard time remembering. And I put the single on the double, which was fine because there was three, but it left that extra bun. Like that was the big point that that it's was crazy my downfall. That it all came down to one bun. 
So every time I look at either fries or bun from now on, I'm going to be like, ah, it was ah, that bun. It was definitely the bun. But your first 13 so, minutes, you, you, I thought, in my, and this was my opinion, the first 13 yeah. minutes, you ate everything that you just spoke about. It was the, the two doubles, the single, like you were coasting. But when I got to the last burger, and the la- I remember I said it to you, we could watch the tape back. I ate the last bite, and the burger started to get cold. Mm. And I was like, this is not good. Because that was a tough bite. And at that point, I almost like started to get the feeling of like I was going to yak. Because it was just so fast. I think I put a, a soda down, too. So you got however many, what is that, seven burgers, th- three buns, and a soda in 13 minutes or whatever it was. So at that point, I was like, okay, I'm going to get to the chicken nuggets, and these are going to be an issue. Because they're cold. They're already cold. They were not an issue at all. Yeah, the yeah. nuggets, I thought, were, were going to be the hardest. Nuggies. We're cake. Crushing nuggets. I kind of wish I left those to the end. Because, like, fries probably would have been a little better early on. Uh, because I thought nugs, you should have done the sprinkle on the... I thought you should have t- took one full medium fry and uh, spread it out on all the burgers. That would have been my Yeah, technique. maybe. And then just I don't, crush, you know? Yeah. The organizational part of me was like, I want to get through them systematically, which was even dumber that I left the bun aside because system, then that was like this thing floating out there that I kept thinking about. I honestly thought about that bun the whole time until the end. And then when I saw it really? and I saw no. the fries, mentally I was beat. If I had just the fries, I think, at the end, I think I could have been like, all right, well, let me ch- chip away. Yeah. But, and I say but all the time. I realize this when I watch this back. But when I tell you every time I put a fry in my mouth, I almost yacked. I, I honestly confirm. almost yacked. I can confirm. Yeah. So it's very easy when you're watching this stuff to be like, just shove it in your mouth. But I also was trying not to throw up. So in my head, I was like, listen, if I get to the end here, I'm going to give myself a shot. I didn't leave enough time and get psyched up enough. I probably should have started a little early and started running around doing the Rocky thing because that gave me that second wind. That was my favorite um, part. That was a lot. It was, it, was a, it was one of the more fun ones I've done, challenge, and I think it's because everyone around and Frank called in with little Frankie. Yeah. That was really motivational. But the, 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 the feeling you get when you're so full and your mind's like, what are you doing? You start to feel sick and you're force-feeding yourself – is one that I don't remember when I did the other challenges. And when it comes back, you're like, oh, here it is. This is that feeling. And I, I think I need to get more comfortable with that if I'm going to do one again. Because at that point, I could have pushed, but I just mentally wasn't tough enough at that point. You so know? it came, so so it it came all, down to mental toughness at the end too? It came down to mental toughness. It came down to the bun. So you're soft. As, in that in that phase, yes. And right after you yak, you feel absolutely fine. Yeah, you were, I felt like a million bucks. It like good, nothing I happened. I, I had a coffee later that night in a Fig yeah. Newton. Like <laughs> like nothing happened, which is alarming. Yeah. Woke up the next day, felt fine. Yeah, I was know, I was fries ask for dinner. you about um were, were there any like fast food effects? Like did you feel like lethargic or anything like after you threw up or you were all right? I don't think so. Like I had a good day the next day. Um, I, I'm one of those guys too. I'll watch uh, Super Size Me, the documentary, which is supposed to turn you off mm-hmm. for food, and it would make me hungry to eat uh, McDonald's. Fun fact: about ten to fifteen people texted me that they went and got McDonald's after that. Oh yeah, which I'm like, Absolutely. that's what you took out of it. I got the same. I got the same text. A lot of people went out and they had um, Mickey D's that day. Uh, but I think you, you gave it a valiant effort, man. I really thought you were going to complete the challenge. So I will say that you let some of us down, but your effort and the heart that you put in, the Rocky, the hands up on the hill, you know, the jumping jacks to get you fired up, that was really good energy. I'm, I'm psyched to see the next one. Even though you said you were hanging them up, uh, we got to start talking about the next one. So. Yeah, it's like Jordan. You can't get away from the game. You, know? right. you try to retire and people keep, pu- keep pulling you back. Yeah. But it's, uh, if I do do it again, it won't be for a while. It's, it's an undertaking. 
And doing it in the middle of the work week was not... That was tough. It didn't affect me, but just the stress of like trying to get stuff done and then being like, oh, God, I got to eat you know, 10 burgers in however long. It's, I should clear the schedule next time. So That was if, fun, though. If you can... Last thing on, on this. If you can apply that challenge to life, what would be one thing that you think you learned and you can apply it to your everyday? Uh, preparation. I should have, and this comes with planning ahead, like I should have been preparing. If I'm talking all this junk about having double quarter pounders easily, <laughs> I should have went out and had them secretly before we even got into this. I like to stack the cards in my favor, and in this scenario, I did not. I just kind of went in willy-nilly, which you know, still put forth the effort, but I think with a little bit of planning, I, I would have succeeded. But also, to your point, you got to develop that mindset. And if I, in the past, the nuggets weren't a problem, but maybe that's because I've done 80 nuggets before. You know, maybe it's that mm-hmm. meant fries. I'm not, a lot of people are pissed off. I'm not a fry guy, especially for McDonald's. I'm a, I'm a Wendy's guy through and through. Oof. Which people are going to hate me saying that, but yeah, I'd much I, rather have Wendy's. Oh, God, no. Um, all right, man. Thank you for the, thank you for that update. Thank you for the support and being in my corner. You were the Mickey to my Rocky. That's what I'm here for, Cla- baby. Your Claudia, stock Cla- went up drastically. Did it? Oh, Claudio's like, uh, have you seen Rocky, Dave? I've never heard of it. What, what is that? Okay. Well, Claudio <laughs> no, hopefully just... gets this reference. He's like a father who throws down the blessing. Yes. You know, in that part. I He's do, like, father, throw me yes. down a blessing. Okay. That was Claudio. Right. That's the first. I, see, now I'm excited. Rocky! I actually, yeah. I actually knew um, that reference, so thank you, kid. I can't wait. I really can't wait till the next one. Um, I still got to come up with some sort of challenge that I can do, but I'm not I'm not a big food guy, man. You you, you would uh, out-eat me uh, in, every, in every aspect, so. Well, yeah, we'll have to come up with a good one for you to do, and I want you to have to do something. Not It doesn't have to be at the same time, but a challenge of that some sort that you do the same week so that we could both be in the same different challenge, but same mindset. I'm, I'm you know? down for, for a good challenge. Uh, I so decided see, too, that yeah. if I do it again, I'm doing it for my name on a menu or something of significance. No more freebies. That was the one, go, one gift. I'm going I'm, pro. I'm going pro. That's good, man. Uh, speaking of challenges. So, Obviously, what everybody is going through now is some sort of challenge, right? We, we've spoken on, on my end, like I'm not a handy guy, but I will tell you that the amount of home improvements that have been going on in terms of small little cleaning projects, cleaning out the garage, um, we just did a, a patio, which I didn't do, but you get a lot of fulfillment, right? So I want to talk a little bit about how improving your space and home improvements basically, um, you know, just assist the whole process in terms of your own mindset and like self improvements. Yeah. Uh, so for to start out, I was just thinking for a sec because there's so much to talk about and yep. there's so many projects that we're undertaking. I think home improvement goes hand in hand with self improvement, right. self sufficiency creating your own space. I know for me, I'm dying to figure out how to finish our garage because one of the reasons I have these stupid microphones on is because I broke (laughs) my my, uh, uh, microphone because I was making a makeshift studio in the nursery and it was just all over the place and it, it fell and broke. All the inconsistency created that stress, which snowballs. So I'm trying to restrict the stress But the self-improvement piece comes with once you're able to establish the home improvements. For example, if you figure out how to pave the back of your your yard and it comes out pristine and you did it or you organized to do it, you then build the confidence to knock out, like you talk about, the momentum, knock out the the next task and not be intimidated by it. Right. Yep. Like you, you, yeah. you buy check, like for me, painting and sanding this whole patch leak, whatever you want to call it in our baby's room. Every time I look at that wall, I'll be like, I did that, you yes. know, and then it creates that, that momentum to now I can go downstairs and have the confidence that I can 
figure out my home office. Yeah, I love where, you, where you're going with that in terms of the, the momentum. But I, I think also us being cooped up in the house the way that we are, I've developed like, a, a serious appreciation and I know you know we always mention the gratitude piece but for your space you know don't have the the biggest house in the world by any means but it's certainly comfortable and I really appreciate having the time right now to be in the house so now we, you're taking the time and you know just stopping by Lowe's and getting two nice nice little planters throwing them in the ground like changing the landscape it does do something for the psyche anybody in my family and my closest friends like you know they know that I'm not handy, right? But I ordered some stuff on Amazon, uh, had to put it together like a, a little wicker box uh, to, to store some cushions in. I put that together myself, put together four chairs. So it's a good feeling. And, and it, 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 it's, I, I like to say we stack the wins. You mentioned something else in terms of, uh, what did you say before? What we were talking about was if you do your Ikea furniture, whatever it was, you're stacking the skills. So yes. you're learning that, all right, I'm going to use my hand screwdriver to get this all put together. You know, next time I'm going to use my screw gun. And then, oh, I have the confidence to use a screw gun. Let me see what else projects I can take on because I have a screw gun now. And then it, it keeps snowballing. So you're stacking mm -hmm. these life skills and confidence where maybe because you put something together in the future, if it starts to break down, you know why it's breaking down. Oh, I can fix that. It's whatever screw. Yeah. And it's it's amazing to also see, you know, we have a, a newer house, so it's not like I have to fix things, but I like things very neat. Right. So yes. what what I've been doing, though, is since we've been moving in, we um, loaded up the garage. Right. So there was like stuff all over the place. But now I took the time to take everything out of the garage clean it all out. So I put it back. Now, Maison, Maison Play, I know a guy that told me about that, everything in its place. Uh, so it's a good feeling to walk into something. And now every week I'm trying to find like a different task, right? Even even thorough cleaning, like here, here's some advice to people because I'm doing it right now and it makes all the difference in the world. Instead of trying to clean your house in one day, Go clean one room, but clean it like as thorough as you've ever cleaned it. Like clean the door jams above the TV, behind the TV, spend an hour in one room for that day, right? So now over the course of the week, you would you probably just cleaned your house in, in one day typically would take you two hours. But now over the course of the week, you did such a thorough job. You actually spent five to 10 hours on the entire house. Uh, so that's mm -hmm. stuff we've been coming up with to stay sane. Um, you know, but it's a really good feeling, man. Really enjoying it, actually. Yeah, I would challenge you to, you're the mindset guy. Don't say I'm not handy out loud anymore. Every time you think of a project, just hype yourself up and say I'm handy. And I bet you it'll snowball into something where you start becoming more handy. Just because yeah. that mental block, like I, I always like, say, I like that. cookies are my weakness. Mm -hmm. And because I say it all the time, I start to believe it. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. And now I am literally a cookie addict. There's but no stopping you're the, me. You're the biscotti gotti. I know, but I that's self-proclaimed. I am the cookie killer. You're the cookie killer. I'm the biscotti gotti. But I'm saying that's right. you, there's, there's so many things that we say and don't think of. And because we're in a more refined area and it's all about us now and our little area and little home and working from home in our space. We're critical on ourselves to say that we're not handy or we're not clean versus say, I am handy, I am clean and try to not change it in a day, but just try to convince yourself that now I'm going to be, now I'm going to be handy. I'm forced to be handy. I have to be, I have dad skills. I have a baby on the way. I'm, that's what I've been saying to myself. And I really do think it's starting to take hold. I'm not doing everything the right way, but it, 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 there's progress. Like I put on 40 coats of paint because I can't sand this thing down smooth enough. So I figure if I lift, I keep adding layers of paint, that'll lift. So I have to sand less, which is taking forever. And I've gone through like a can whole you tell gallon. Them, can you tell them what you did to your thumb, by the way, with your thumb? Oh, <laughs> so... I'm sanding a portion so that the wall is nice and flush so I can paint it and it doesn't look like there's a ledge. And <laughs> you, uh, so I went out or I didn't go out, but I, I have, um, it's a sand, I don't even know what it's called. It's like a sanding handle 
and you could put sandpaper and you lock it in so you have a, something to sand with, it didn't fit. So it literally is the perfect size where it just doesn't get under the clasps to keep it in place. So I'm like, ah, I'll just do it bare hand. I didn't even wear gloves. And I was scraping so hard in such a zone. I had music blasting. I scraped off my thumbprint. I went to go phone. into my iPhone <laughs> and I'm like, it's not yes. working. And I it's look incredible. at my thumb and it's raw. I was like, what am I doing? So it, it, getting, we've said it a bunch of times, but getting uncomfortable doing things out of your norm, like painting and sanding, it gives you kind of this confidence that flows over in other areas. You know, it's, it's, and it's, it's this new feeling of wanting to provide and with restrictions on people coming into your house, can we get by? Can we survive? Yes, we're not in the Amazon, but this is our little patch of grass. Right. This is our little area. Can I keep the house running without any help? Yep. And it's tough. It's a lot it, tougher it, than it, I it thought. It is tough, but it's, it's, um, it's trying to figure it out. We're, we're constantly navigating. But I also think there is something to say, like, and I love what you said about me telling, not, I got to start telling myself that I am handy. So I know I can do the job. But the problem with me is that when I engulf myself into something, right now I want it to be the best and I have to I have to have it a certain way. So then when something does go a little south and I'm like thrown off my track, right? Apply it to life. Same same uh, road that we're talking about. You know, you, you get frustrated in it and it just takes up so much unnecessary time. But, uh, but fortunately now I have the time. So I am finding that I enjoy it a little bit more. But I don't think yeah. if I if, if I was at, you know, work and we were do, we were back to norm as a society, if I would be doing all of this stuff, I'm happy that we're able to find some sort of light at the end of the tunnel. Um, and, and it's it's been a positive experience thus far, man. So that's that's awesome. I, I really, really love it. So I am also very stubborn, like yourself. And once you, wait, I wait. start, are you are you calling me stubborn, or are you saying that I'm stubborn because I'm I'm saying I'm stubborn? <laughs> no, you're stubborn. Oh, I'm stubborn okay. too. It's not I a bad trait. Clarity. I feel like stubborn gets a bad rap. But if you're, st it's okay to be stubborn. But at some point, you just have to admit if you're wrong, which I'm fine doing. I'm wrong all the time. But it takes a little while for me to get there. So with like this painting thing, once I start doing it, I'm like, I'm doing it. I'm getting it done. Nothing you can tell me will stop me from doing it. You can't tell me, oh, you're supposed to do it this way. I'm like, I see that it, the, the paint is growing and it's getting closer to, so you can't <laughs> visually see the difference. I'm going to do it my way because I know it's going to happen. Yeah. I don't know how to do it the way you're telling me. So, you know, I'll try to learn on the next one, but I'm, I'm flowing right now. And that gets me into trouble. Because I get so tunnel visioned on visions and ideas and that I just kind of go into my head and I'm like, this is the way I'm doing it. I'm not going out to Home Depot and getting the tool I need. I'll get it the next time around. But I have to happen. learn my lesson this time. And I make it harder on myself. Do you ever do that where, where you, you know that I, I know I should get an electric sander. I know it. But I bought 12 sheets of regular sandpaper that I'm not just going to sit there and be like, well, I shouldn't have bought those. Well, yes, I, I, I definitely can relate to that. Uh, but we even see it in, in it, with us when we uh, navigate, we have certain conversations. We know, right? But yeah. then it, it, it's, it's also being able to just say, you know what? You are right. Or you know what? That's a good point. So there's a lot of growth there. But I love how we're able to now see and we're able to record a conversation like this and apply it to to life because all of this ties into to life in general. And that's what we're trying to do, right? Trying to uh, put forth conversations and just, just letting people know exactly what we're going through in our lives. So just like you said, yeah, we're not in the Amazon by, by any yeah. means. But for yeah. us, this is right now our little Amazon. And we got to take yeah. care of it and we got to figure it out. Yeah. I feel like I'm not naked and afraid, but I'm in my yeah. house. Yeah. And I'm trying to just make sure all the mechanicals are working and there's no leaks in the roof. But it's... But, so how this translates to self-improvement, the, the, I think the ability to be able to take your time before starting a task and not analysis by or paralysis by analysis, not overthinking things, but thinking through things and say, all right, well, if I'm chipping this paint off and 
you know, in business or life, if I'm taking this job, if I'm adding this side hustle, how does this affect long term? Can I do it a better way? Uh, if I'm taking on this listing, does it align with what I want to do? How can I make this listing a uh, sell or easier? Can I have a conversation in the front end with my clients to set the expectations to make sure that instead of recalibrating six months from now, we have the tough conversation up front? So it, it's something that I do a little better in business than in my personal life because I think once I get to my personal life, I just turn things off and I'm like, I'm just going to bully this wall and get it done because I want to feel like I'm rugged. But mm -hmm. if you can hone that skill and not worry about being right, but be, worry about being effective and just have no ego in things, that's where I think the sweet spot is. And I'm not there and I want to get to that. But that is so hard to just take a step back and be, yes, I have all the equipment. It's not the right equipment. I screwed up. And yep. being okay with that. It saves you so much time in the back end. Of course. And, and to, to just echo that last piece, there's what we're trying to do is exactly that. And I'm trying to do that as well. But I remember in, uh, when we first started this, right, I, I, had a, I had told you that like one of my goals, and I think this was just a regular conversation, but one of my goals was to be more, um, and this is in reference to what you said, you're different in your personal life versus your work life, right? Like you have no problem um, admitting you're wrong in the in the workplace, but then when you've applied it to your personal life. So that's what I'm trying to, to strive for too, is that consistency um, and, and basically being the same throughout, <clears throat> excuse me, all the tracks of my life, right? And, and, and just being open and vulnerable. We did a whole uh, podcast on, you know, being authentic and being vulnerable. So we see it now more and more day in and day out on different ways to, to attack this stuff. Yeah, and I think it's because when we get home, we're with you know our wives or our family, and we're more comfortable. So the guard kind of goes down, and the the thought process, the the uh, the the problem solving and everything uh, kind of slows down. So your your business mind shuts off a little bit, and that gets us into some hot water. Versus just having one mind that is working at a high level. In every, as in every aspect, which is easier said than done, obviously. But if you get into a situation where you're trying to figure out a solution for your personal, um, and I'm guilty of this, kind of putting it on the back burner, my personal stuff that events or things, I really don't think through them because I'm like, all right, I'll figure it out. It's really not a big deal. But if you take the time to plan things or figure out a solution with your wife, usually it avoids fights in the back end. And I know I'm super guilty of this. You know, like, oh, why didn't we plan this ahead of time? Why are we rolling in late at 9 p.m. to something? Like, you know, it, it's all about just, like you said, creating a seamless, uh, a seamless mentality that makes everything in your life more efficient. And then it, it overflows onto both sides, you know, because you're more efficient at work, you're less stressed, which makes you more happy at home, which then in turn create a better home life, which makes you better, more efficient at work. And it, it ping pongs. Right. You, you want it to be that fluid transition uh, wherever we go. But that, that's what this is, man. We're just trying to get better every day. And I always say this, but one of the main goals is better than yesterday, right? Yes, which I think we're achieving. But I'm worried to watch our goals episode back. And I got to get on a lot of these because commercial real estate, absolutely just everything I was working on just disappeared. <laughs> like, Well, look, overnight. I, mean, I don't think anybody can... can have um foreseen what was going to happen i mean this is this is crazy and not that it's an excuse we could definitely yeah, get yeah. on it when it gets back on track but yeah my you know I, I can't really go ahead and make this financial investment that i was talking about when i just got laid off yeah. of my consulting <laughs> like it, it, yeah. that, it doesn't work yeah. that way <laughs> yeah. you know so it's it's good to have them we could look back but the other thing and i've said it in the past episode you got to think uh instead of i can't how can i and it, it forces you to get creative. You know, how can I? So, for example, the food show, we were planning on releasing it. All this happened. All of our appointments got thrown away uh, with the podcast. Now we have to record virtually. How can we keep recording? How can we keep recording video episodes for food? We're going to do takeout now. We're going to, you know, we got creative. I'm going to get the food item. Uh, my videographer is going to get the same item so he can shoot the filler 
and we're going to mash it together. So it's stuff that we can use for no snooze podcast also, but just having that mentality of, oh, you know, we'll wait. If you, if you have kids at home and you can't continue the progress or whatever you're doing, that's fine. But if you have the ability to continue your progress, you got to think, how can I continue what I was doing just in a different way? And that's, that opens up the gateways because, you know, how can we give our wives some type of shower or at least give them something to be happy about? There's all these solutions. We just have to really think harder and get more creative. And my hands are going and crazy. No, that's fine, man. I literally have mine tied because I, I do the same thing. But exactly to echo on what you're saying, you know, I like to simplify things. Two words that we speak about, pivot and adapt, right? When yeah. something gets thrown at you, how are you going to pivot and then adapt to the current situation? So that, that's what we're trying to do, um, you know, on, on a daily basis. And you make a really good point. You know, it, it's just it, when it comes to our wives, right? Like, okay, this is now the scenario. It sucks. It's absolutely awful. But how are we going to make this special for them to make sure that they have something? Um, yeah. and, and, you know, y y there's so many different opportunities and it's forced us into a new way of thinking. Uh, so you, you can either be really creative with the time and what's going on right now, or you could fold. And unfortunately, there's going to be people that fold. Um, and, and you know what? This is now the opportunity for people who are going to utilize this adversity and utilize this challenge um, and this hardship right now to ultimately be better when we all come back. Yeah, the, uh, someone told me a great visual. I don't know if it was in a book. There was a book, The Obstacle is the Way, that basically talks about this whole scenario, which is very bizarre that I read it right yes. before everything hit. But someone gave me the visual of a boxer when they get hit with something, if they're going the same way as the punch, you know, it, it's it, less impact. So that's how I've started to think about things. If, if it's going this way, how do I move that way and still, pro, you know, increase the progress or keep moving forward? So I'm trying to go now, with the flow. Now, now it makes sense that you, you put your hoodie on, you tuck it in, you start moving with the punches, you're flowing. Uh, I, I like it, kid. Good stuff. Yeah. I'm trying to toughen up, too. Mike, this might be the most anticipated section of the podcast. So this will take us into questies. I do All love right? this part. Yeah, this, this one's good. And then I got the, you know, the to snooze or not to snooze coming up for you too. I know you enjoy those. It kind of makes me feel like I'm who wants to be a millionaire on a show, right. a game show. <laughs> yes, yes. Question for you before we get started. If you could be on any game show, what game show would you pick? I think it would have been that game show on Nickelodeon back in the day with the goo. Oh, uh, what... Double Dare. That's a <laughs> yes. good one. I didn't think <laughs> yeah. about that. Yeah. That's a good one. I was thinking Legends of the Hidden Temple because it looked the most fun. But it was so hard. I don't know if hard. you remember seeing that. I've never seen it. But like today, but sounds, I would do Wheel really of Fortune because Jeopardy, I have no shot. I, ha I, I feel like some of these game shows, Mike, they ask these questions and I have no idea. Of, it makes me feel really stupid. I don't even know what they're asking. Like the question, <laughs> how they format it. I'm like, what? I, I answer something and I'm like, I don't know what they're saying. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. CV said cool. Dave American Gladiator with the tennis balls and the. That would be yeah, good. No, they, he would be of one those, of the gladiators, though. <laughs> some of those challenges, I don't know. I, I don't think I'm getting through those either. But I'm, I'm all looks, you know? I'm very fragile. Yeah, you're, you're a facade. All looks, no strength. I'm the opposite. No looks, all strength, body-wise. Yeah, yeah. So to deter us on the, or uh, sidetracking us, I'm ready for the questies, Regis. Okay. So this came in from Lennox. And Lennox, Lennox Lewis, is, boxer. Is in Missouri. Missouri, wow. Mike, what's the capital of Missouri? Isn't Memphis. it... Um, Je no, Memphis, no, Tennessee. I think I think it's Jefferson, Jefferson City. Jefferson, I Missouri. I Dude, remember oh. from like middle school. Speaking of being uh, dumb, we did a geography one. Dana and I, she crushed me. You just have oh, to yeah? pick where the states yeah, are. I'm not, I'm not really Terrible. good at geography either. That's why I uh, sell right. them in a small area. <laughs> so I went on a date with my best friend's cousin. He hooked us up. And I is really this liked all it. relationship advice every time? <laughs> this is one relationship. I try to pull one from each section. We had a great time, good conversation, but then we started talking about the future. 
She mentioned that she doesn't want kids, but wants to be married. And I've always seen myself as someone who wants to be a dad. Would this be a deal breaker for you? For kids? I would say yes. If I want kids and a wife didn't want kids, then that would be the deal breaker. But yeah, it, I, I, think, I have to stop saying uh, but. I've said but a million times this episode. Sorry, what were you saying? I think I agree. I would need to know, I would need to know why doesn't she want to have kids? And I'm just, I'm going out on a limb here, you know? It's fair. I don't know, I don't know the situation, but maybe she had like a really tough upbringing. Maybe, maybe she can have kids. I, Lennox, how old are you? Well, if you she know, can like, have kids, you can still adopt. So. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. So I, the first thing would be that I would have to, I think, know why, but... If it all came down to it and like you just don't want kids and I want kids, yeah, we we got to cut ties on a personal. And I'm glad I thank you for putting that in because at the end he said, would this be a deal breaker for you? Yeah. This is us answering the question, <laughs> not telling you to go yeah. break up if this is your situation. But if you are, uh, if you want kids and you bite your tongue and for whatever reason, good or bad, for whatever reason they don't want kids, it's going to come up at some point. And it's not fair to the other person to go through with it and then 10 years down the road be in the same position. Yeah. and, and Cut ties being, and run. <laughs> you being transparent right now and open and vulnerable about how you're feeling about it, that's, that's the go-to, right? Handle that yeah. uncomfortable situation now versus getting into something just because you think that it's going to be a really good vibe and then down the line look you're married and now you really want kids then you really got yourself an issue um so good luck a lot to of, you, man yeah and a lot of people who have kids tell me don't have kids so who knows yeah <laughs> that's good get don't have kids get another dog yeah so this one is from a fellow paisan jj madoni oh what a name uh, oh this is good where did the kamon come from and how do I get it out of my head? <laughs> <laughs> That's so, amazing. <laughs> there is actually a backstory to the kamon. I don't know if you if you uh, know this, Mike, but I used to instruct uh, boot camps and the initiative was called Be Fit One Day at a Time. And it was uh, a county initiative I had started like years ago. Was this was at the, the, the um, senior center? No, this was out. This was before that. This was at the outdoor um, outdoor parks, um, and I used to run. I used to host different uh, fitness boot camps uh, and like health and wellness clinics. And it was the whole initiative was called "Be Fit One Day at a Time." But when you're doing a uh, a workout, right, and you're you're a coach or you're a personal trainer, or you're a group fitness instructor, you need something to hype people up when it there's that awkward silence. Right. So I never really could think of something. So when when people were on their break and I was coaching them through things, right, you're telling them chest up, shoulders back, they're doing it right. I needed something that was like catchy. And that's how come on came into play. I like so how I, you said I, I couldn't think of anything. Back. So I just say, come on. That's right. But it's and it good. just it just flowed. It just flowed. And I had another one. It was always high knees and breathe. Uh, to try to give them time in between, but all all my um, you know the 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 clients who took those those classes, they all remember. Come on, the finger roll is a new one. Uh, the wink has always been, but the, that's where the come on uh, started from. And good luck to you getting it out of your head because that's not happening. I, and I've tried to recreate it. You do it very well. It's like uh, come on. I make the weird fate, but you're come on. You barely have like any mouth movement, which I think is key. I'm going to figure it out, but it's, it's, it's an amazing uh, tagline. It applies to everything. Come like, on. Hey, Dane, how's the dinner looking? Come on. Like you could throw it in <laughs> anywhere. Yeah. You going to, what do you think about this house? Come on. Come on. Right. It works everywhere. <laughs> it is in my head constantly. I wonder oh, how many people have said it to other, you know, other people and then be like, is that Dave? <laughs> Imagine if that becomes um, big enough where people like anyone right. who says, come on, they think of you. It's a scary thought. It is a scary thought. Last, last question here from Lola Zass on Instagram. Mike. Uh-oh. Direct question. Yes. Wait. 
Yes, it's, it, well, it's, it starts, so it's it's weird. It says, oh, Mike, my fiance, and ah. I are looking, <laughs> are looking to buy a home within the next year. But this applies to you. Yeah, I have three friends who are agents, but what is the most important thing we should look for in a realtor? Curious to hear both perspectives. Go ahead. Okay. Right off the bat, you want someone who's locally, local, has local knowledge of wherever you're looking. It's great wait, to use. Wait, I got a question. Is yeah. knowledge different than experience? Yes. Do you want, yes. in, in a Good. perfect world, do you want experience I, and I knowledge? I agree. But so, I agree. Like, if you're young, you may have certain knowledge versus yeah. the experience. Go ahead. Yeah. And you, uh, so you can learn a market, right? Like, I helped you buy a house, I've looked at comps. Uh, so there's a way to work with people as long as they're up front with you and say, listen, I, this isn't where I primarily do business. Happy to work with you if you're comfortable. And you go out, you see properties, uh, you sign a shorter buyer representation, it's called, and see how you like them. And you know, maybe you go out with three of them. Uh, it's like dating. You go out with three of them, you see who you like, and then you commit you know, if, if you're in the, in the market. But I would say... See, knowledge. you know, just have a conversation about properties you're interested in. See if they add any value, if they give you some good feedback. And you got to trust your gut at some level. That's a, that's a good point. And to add to that, I think, I, so I was thinking back to, you know, when, when we were going through the whole process. And regardless of you being, you know, one of my best friends, cool. But the thing that I would have to say to anybody that's, that's in that process, it would be trust. Right. Like, obviously, there's a motive for a sale for everybody. It doesn't matter what industry you're in. Like, you want to get the job done. But now beyond the sale, how do you feel and how do you do you trust this person to represent you? Like this person as your as your agent may potentially meet your neighbors before you do. They may potentially meet the builders. They may potentially meet the contractors and the small businesses that are in your community before you do. Are you comfortable with the way that they do business? Do you trust their their level and their uh, uh, their level of knowledge? Uh, but really, when it comes down to it, for me, I had to know that Mike was going to be the guy that I trusted to do the deal, you know, and to really make the phone calls on my behalf. And I was literally okay with him, you know basically acting as me at that time. So for me, I think the answer would be, would be trust. Yep, I agree. And we had a good conversation before we started the process. And I'm the type where if the people have someone locally they want to work with and they feel more comfortable with them, I'm not going to, I'll fight for your business, but I don't, I want you to be comfortable and all the people I work with to be comfortable. Part of that is I'm a full-time agent. This is my career. This is how I make a living. So I think it's also important, nothing against people who are part-time, but the agents that are full-time, you know they are doing a lot of business. They are worried, well, not worried, but conscious of their reputation. And usually, if it's the right fit, those people, like myself, have our client's best interest in mind because even if, say, you do a deal and they're not happy at the end of the day, you know, in a year from now, that does you no good to build your business and continue the relationship. And even more so when you have a personal relationship with someone, they want to make sure that they're providing a great service. So it's, it's dating. You got to date, but then you also have to know what you're looking for to Dave's point. To snooze or not to snooze, Mike, would you rather questies, all right? I love it. Would you rather only be able to whisper or only able to shout? This is this, <laughs> this is a is really good, good one. I uh, shout because I shout anyway, so it's no different than what I'm doing. See, and I th I love when we we go opposite here. <laughs> Are you so gonna say whisper? I, I would choose whisper, and here's why. If you ever in a in an old school Italian family, right? I, I'm sure you have an uncle. I know I do. You watch movies; those are certainly true. The real bosses. They don't have to speak very loudly. Uh. So if so if I can if I can navigate to where you know I can get close enough and I'm speaking very low, when you speak in a low tone, people are basically forced to listen to you. So I think I would choose based off of my experiences, um, I, I would choose whispering. 
Whispering, you make a valid point, but <laughs> you're just gonna go the, everywhere screaming. At, other screaming side of the coin is who you, if you're, what if you're trying to fire someone up in the current situation we're in? I'm, you know, in this situation, I would be far away from people. Hey, Bill, how you doing? From like 40 <laughs> yards away, you know. So, also, are you saying I'm gonna get whacked if I'm if I'm in this because I'll be the one yelling? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm just saying I, I think I can I can still motivate people if I speak very low. Come on. Try to try to whisper for a whole day. And I'll try to scream no for a whole day. Baby. Come on. Yeah. That was a good one. I think That was good. You're probably right. Probably whisper. Oh, you flip flopper. No, I'll uh, wh- I'll do scream. I'll do scream. <laughs> I'll do scream. <laughs> Sorry, see me. Would you rather know when you're going to die? Ooh. Or know how you're going to die. I would say when. I agree with that. Yeah. I definitely agree. Because you can then prepare and you can make certain life decisions, certain yeah. life moves before it. If you just tell me how I'm going to die, like I, I, when, I, when I saw this, I'm like, eh, if you told me I had a heart attack, that doesn't tell me when that was. So it, it could be tomorrow. How about this? What if they told you you were going to get hit by a car or something? Then you'd, you'd be like, that could, <laughs> be one, that could be when I'm 95. That could be tomorrow. I have no idea. Right. It's, that's terrible. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to do that. So definitely um, I, w- I would choose knowing when. Last yeah. one here, Mike. Oof. Tough. Would you rather be trapped in a small room with 10,000 tarantulas for 10 minutes? <laughs> oh, my God. Or... Eat 10 tarantulas in 10 minutes. Are, is there a side of fries with the tarantulas? <laughs> uh, 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 so eat, tra- say it again. Trapped in a room. Trapped in a room for 10 minutes with 10,000 tarantulas. How big's the room? Small room, it says. Small room. Or eat 10 tarantulas in 10 minutes. Are, like, are the tarantulas alive? Can you eat a tarantula? Yeah. They're pretty big, I think, dude. So I think you'd have I, you'd have to eat them. I gotta eat them. Have to. Yeah. Have to. Because I, I would to. imagine if you're in a room with ten thousand tarantulas, uh, you're gonna get stung. All over. In, even if it's not like a big sting, you're done. Yeah. No. I'm not, not a spider not guy, happening. by the way. Yeah. You no. Like spi- me, me neither. No. I don't like them. I would take. I'm more afraid of spiders than snakes. Oof. I don't know about that. That's a yeah, good. spiders. I'll, I'll hit you in, with that like, one down the line. A snake's not sneaking up on me. This brings us to my favorite section, Dave's Dime of the Week. Dimes, dimes, dimes. Don't wait until you're confident to show up. Show up until you're confident. That's a good one. Where'd you get that one? Right here. I don't know. I don't know uh, where do, I got it. I, do you really just have, sit in that? You sit in the chair and you're like, <laughs> I just sit and I'm like, Dave's dime, come to me for the week. No, yeah. so I, I have I have a ton of the the motivational ones that you know throughout my my the, the past couple of years specifically, um, I, I've I've taken pictures of them. I've you know kept them just to where I can see because every morning I wake up and I got to get in that mindset. But this is a, a really good one, um, and it applies to to even our conversation today. Right, I just got to keep doing the work to get myself confident being a handyman versus just waiting for that for that moment to happen. How good was the last dance? The doc. Did you watch it with Jordan? Oh, yes. Wow. Absolutely. Oh, oh, I don't have my Bulls hat on. Uh, yeah. Absolutely phenomenal. Not Wild. a competition though. It's it, it really confirms he's the goat. I've always said it. I even said it. You know, rest in peace to, to Kobe Bryant. I, I did say on that episode when we spoke about him that, that Jordan will always be my personal GOAT. Watching that makes me feel so soft. Just in so many ways. And he got cut. Sophomore watching year. that watching that also confirmed that you were soft for me too. So Yeah. So <laughs> see I'm saying I'm soft out loud. Now I'm I'm yeah. rugged, I'm tough, I'm gonna have a you nine got, pack. Uh, <laughs> my my mantra for today, Miguelito's mantras. Ito, ito, ito. Is run to the roar. Do you want me to explain it? No, it's. I, I thought you get I thought it. You, I do get it. I do get it. So dive right in. Can run you explain to the it? Roar. 
No. Run. What? Well, yes. Yes. But there, the background story about it, and every time I say but, from the next episodes on, I owe you a dollar. Okay? Perfect. I've said it a hundred times. I love it. So Run to the Roar is a book that Matt Tierno recommended me. Shout out Matt T. Uh, Little Bear, we call him. He, uh, the book is about a... When it, the overarching concept is when a group of lions attack can't antelope or cantaloupe antelope not cantaloupe. <laughs> cantaloupe cantaloupe can't run very fast antelope <laughs> <laughs> they they the one of the lions gets up on a hill and roars and all the other lions are waiting on the other side ready to eat them the ones that survive are the ones that run into the danger the air run to the roar i absolutely love that quote man do you like it but tv it's, I do. It's applicable. Uh, oh, CB. But it's it's also it's applicable to life, a- applicable to the no snooze mindset. I don't know what he's shaking his finger about, um, but he thinks I he's Matumbo ex- now. He's I doing exactly, this the whole episode. I get, I get exactly what you're talking about, Mike. <laughs> no, so good point, CB. If you're at a zoo <laughs> and you hear a lion roar, do not run to the cage. <laughs> This is so if you're no, no, tell tell him Mike sent you. This is yeah. Run <laughs> to the cage and tell Mike sent you. Disclaimer: Don't I don't want to get sued. Call the zookeepers. It's <laughs> metaphorical, okay? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, solid, Mike. I really love doing these epis with you. I do wish that we were in person. I really miss you. But these these are solid epis, man. And we're pu- putting together a nice. Um, you know, string of documentation that we're going to be able to look back on, man, throughout this whole pandemic. But I really can't wait to be next to you again, man. That was so sweet, and you've really touched me. But I'll be honest, I haven't missed you guys a bit. I love this. <laughs> I'm in my own area. You know, it's nice. But yes, I do miss you guys. It, the phys- you know what? The f- I feel like I could talk a lot more junk to you now that we're in between screens because you right. can't just come get me. You know. Listen. And now that I know that you're going to run right to the roar, I'm going to let one of these, um, Roars these, out. these big guys. I, no, I'm just going to let one of these big guys come to your house, start talking. I'll tell them, uh, tell them Mike sent you when we get let, there. Let me get, do you have uh, socks on today? Can you do the heat on the feet? Let me see those legs, Mr. Pelly. Oh, you, you want, come on, man. You don't want to see these. Let me see those legs. toothpicks. I don't, I don't have, I don't have um, any socks on, but I can, I can certainly show you my, my calves. Oh, yeah, let's do a cab shot. This is uh, the next segment. This is uh, oh, Cavs. Wow. What? Go oh, ahead. Wow, no, what? keep going. I'm, I'm going to get no. you a nice view. Get you a really nice view of the calves here, man. I'm struggling, though. I don't know what rhymes with calves, though. I don't know how to get this, dude. <laughs> he, can't, he can't get his pants over his calves. Hold on. I'll put, put it here so you can see it, too. Yeah, let me see. Yeah. Uh, I'm getting nauseous. <laughs> I feel like we're fl- flying around. Well, just the calf part. CV is I such do have a heat hater. On the feet. He's literally He's the biggest, the biggest hater. Whenever anybody talks junk, yeah. Yeah. you're like, eh, it's all right. The, those ankles look like they're ready to snap any second, though. <laughs> <laughs> You ever um, watch out? You don't step on anything in the the house. Snap like a twig. Uh, wow, I'm right here, Wait, Mike. Yeah, Mike. I'm here. We need we need some heat on the feet. Let me give it to you. I'm using the calamari today. Go ahead. See that? Wow. Look at those. Tough. Tough. Wow. Is it so? Cal- calamari is squid, right? <laughs> yeah. And is squid octopus? Oh my god. Is is a rat a mouse? No, but when you have I when don't you know. have two or more octo It's octopi. Octopi. <laughs> oh man, that was awesome, man. Until next time, stop snoozing. Get up and get after it. My man. That's another Epi in the Books. Go follow us on Instagram and Facebook at No Snooze Podcast. Subscribe.
subscribe to our YouTube channel, No Snooze. Come on. Come on.